imagine putting in six years of work career-wise, just putting in the time, putting in the effort, and all of a sudden, your whole plan that you decided was gonna be the next four years of your life just falls flat on its face. I'm sure I'm not the only one that's experienced a situation like this. So if you yourself or you know someone that's been in a situation like this, this is actually my story of how I ended up being a field service engineer. Welcome back to Untitled Label, where we strive for greatness through optimization. I'm John, I'm a field service engineer, and I wanna share some information about my job with you. Today we're talking about how I decided to become a field service engineer. So a little bit of my background, in high school I did pretty well, in school in general, uh, made it to college, I was studying civil engineer. Um, I kind of realized that that career path wasn't necessarily for me. My first job also was with uh, lens crafters. Uh, I was a lead lab tech. Actually, I started out as a lab tech, ended up being a lead lab tech. Um, so I was one of the guys that was in the back working on um, making your glasses if you ever got glasses from lens crafters. After that, after um, just kind of being in a situation where school-wise, I wasn't really um, 100% sure I wanted to pursue civil engineering, I decided to uh, enlist in the Navy. Um, I already had a good working knowledge of math, stuff like that, so doing well on the ASVAB wasn't really that hard. Um, I scored pretty well, um, and I decided to sign up for the AECF program. Uh, from the ACF program, I ended up becoming a fire controlman, uh, which I worked on ship self-defense system and cooperative engagement capabilities and a few other things that are kind of irrelevant now. When it comes to your background, you just have to have a career that is a little bit involved with technical. So for example, uh, one of the things that I learned through um, the Navy was apprentice technical training, ATT. Um, through that program, it gives you a good working knowledge of electronics and how things kind of work. From then on, my A school and my C school were also kind of technically inclined. I worked on consoles for the most part. Um, these consoles, what was kind of special about them was they kind of tied all the weapon systems as well as all the radars to one system. So you kind of have to understand a little bit of all those systems to know your system. So there's a lot of little nuances, little tricks about these radars, these weapon systems that you have to know in order to make sure your system's working correct. Now this kind of brings us to where we have transferable skills. One of the things that I did very, very often was troubleshoot. Again, I mentioned working on other uh, systems that kind of tie into my system, ship self-defense system. Um, by working alongside my peers that were working on either 67 radar, 73, etc., all these different radars that were on the ships, all these different weapon systems that were on the ships, since they all tie into my system, I had to work alongside other people, other um, necessarily other rates, as well as just other people doing different things on the ship um, to putting in simple terms and understand a little bit of what they're doing to make sure my system works to its best of its ability. So troubleshooting was one of the, probably one of the best skills I've learned from um, my career path coming up through the Navy. And by the way, if you're finding any of this information useful, helpful in any shape, way or form, uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, consider subscribing. If you hit the notification bell, whenever I post a new video, it'll let you know. Um, if you can share this video too, it helps the channel grow. Definitely appreciate you. Now, when stuff is actually going correct, you're gonna be doing maintenance. So I have a maintenance heavy background. I've done so many PMs, um, having spot checks, etc. So it's something that I've done for the majority of my good five, I'd say five years um, in my Navy once completing a school, of course. Once you get to a good point where you're actually able to understand how your equipment works for the most part, you're doing maintenance pretty smoothly, everything's working smooth. Next step is you're gonna wanna explore your tech pubs. Um, understanding how to navigate through your tech pubs, finding information in your tech pubs is also a good skill to have as a field service engineer. I think last but not least is the travel aspect of the job. Um, a lot of us, even in the military in general, we're used to going on deployments, especially in the Navy, we had underway. So you would come in uh, to port, you're in port 
for maybe two weeks, bang, you're back out for a couple of days, you come back. So you're always on the go. Just it was more so in a longer time period. So occasionally deployments were anywhere between, I don't know, six to nine months that I've experienced um, to underways, which should last maybe a week, a couple of days to maybe a month at a time. So it kind of really varied. You never really knew what you would get. It was nothing consistent. Now I'm gonna mention some additional uh, skills that I had in the military that maybe you have as well. If it's something that you do have, you will actually excel at being a field service engineer. First one's gonna be able to work independently, managing yourself pretty well and just staying busy and always working on something to help out the team. Next one, kind of tying into this, the previous one is going to be your time management. Um, I had good time management while I was in the Navy. I think that's one of the things that I kind of learned to excel at, just watching other people, other leaders. Um, you gotta have good time management. As a field service engineer, it's one of the most crucial things that you need to have. This one's for people in a more uh, senior or leadership position. Um, it's gonna be, if you take care of your people, they're, you're gonna have good retention. Um, that's one thing I saw that was kind of an issue in the Navy and you argue with me or not, um, they dropped ASVAB scores to 10. You need a 10 now to actually be able to enlist. The Navy is having some issues, either keeping people in or getting people to sign up. So take it as you will. I just think if you take care of your people, people are going to want to stick around. On a side note, I will throw in though, uh, if you're able to do skill bridge and you're you actually you're looking for a company that's going to be um, able to cater towards Skillbridge. I think this is going to be something that it would be definitely worth looking into. Um, I have a couple friends that are in a process of transitioning, getting out of the military, and uh, they're kind of asking me all these questions about being a field service engineer. I think giving them the opportunity to have that firsthand experience, see what the job is like while they're still in the process of getting out. I think that's gonna be probably one of the best experiences you can have. Because one, you know what the job is like, you know your expectations, and you don't have to fully commit to something right after you get out. A lot of us in the process of getting out, this is a whole new, uh, whole new like chapter in our life. You know, We want a little soft cushion if we can help it. Skillbridge will definitely be able to provide you that opportunity. Well, I've been in this profession for about two years now, um, going on my third year. And I've learned a lot about this job. Um, one of the reasons why I started this YouTube was to try to get this information out there uh, to everyone that's actually interested in becoming a field service engineer. Um, what I see long-term wise is it's gonna be a good career if you find a good company that you enjoy working for and they're meeting your needs. Um, career wise, job security is pretty good uh, for the most part, even despite how the economy is. Um, a lot of these uh, medical, I'm in the biomedical industry they're looking for people that are like myself you know you have the technical skills you can pick things up rather quickly you're independent they need people like that to join um, their team so if you actually have those traits if you can keep up the hard work uh, from what you've learned before your job experience you're going to succeed you're going to do well i hope you guys found this information kind of useful i'm going to try to do more of these um insightful videos it's not really me doing anything out of the ordinary i'm not out traveling the whole world um, as you see some other people doing but it is kind of informational i try to share my life with you guys being a field service engineer is part of my life so with that said i'll catch you on the next one